Hey guys, today we are going to a lake, or as some of you may call a small pond, to see what kind of wild herbs and plants we can find and forage for medicinal and edible purposes. I am a professional herbalist and I just like getting out and walking around in the woods and by lakes and beaches and showing you guys what you can find. Right out of the parking lot, we have Oregon grape berries. They are not actual grapes. They are extremely sour and the root of this plant I have covered in the past. It is high in berberine, nature's antibiotic. This time of year, we are just focused on the berries, high in antioxidants, good for your skin and hair. It's so sour, but so delicious. They make an excellent jam. 10 out of 10, I recommend Oregon great berries if you like some sour things. Here is our lovely lake. As you can see, there's lots of birds. There's lots of vegetation. You can even see a big line of green in the lake, and that is just a wall of lily pads with little lotus flowers on them. If you've ever been to the Pacific Northwest, you may recognize this super duper common ground cover. This is salalberry. It's got big, alternately arranged, kind of dull looking leaves and purple berries in July and August. The berries have like a little star shape on their butts. They're very sweet, universally edible, so delicious. All in all, great trail snack. Just make sure that you know what you're eating. I couldn't find any of the roses. They are all turned into rose hips, but this is Little Wild Rose. It has cute little pink flowers, and right now the rose hips are in their green stage. In a month or two, they will be red and delicious, high in vitamin C, ready to make into jellies or syrups or medicine. Just a delicate, beautiful little wild rose. These are my duck friends. They are girl ducks. They are brown little mallard ladies, and I don't have any seeds or anything for them today, and my children are about to scare them off, so I will just enjoy their company while it lasts. To our left here is our native red twig dogwood. Dogwoods tend to like the water, and you can identify them by their parallel arranged leaves with parallel veins. You can see up here some of the leftover berries that the birds have not quite eaten yet. They are kind of greenish, whitish blue, and they are very medicinal. Not very tasty, very astringent, but astringent things help stop bleeding and diarrhea, which is what native tribes around here used it for, along with headaches and fevers. It is a close relative of Cornus alba, which is the Asian dogwood. You can see the little flowers here. They've got like four little petals, and they come in little clusters. Anyway, the Asian dogwood has a berry called Shanju Yu, which is famous Chinese medicine for anti-aging and beauty. And these berries are all similar and used in a similar way. They are very good at promoting the yin quality of the body, very water element. But make sure you have the right species because some dogwoods are not edible. Tucked into the dogwood closer to the water is a huge patch of one of my favorites, wild mint. How do I know it's a mint? Well, besides it having the mint family characteristics like parallel leaves and clusters of tiny little aromatic flowers, it just smells like mint. And it tastes like mint. It is unmistakable. I am not at risk for being poisoned because mint looks like mint no matter what species it is. This is Mentha arvensis, the field mint. It grows wild here in a lot of places, but I think it's still a great find. In Chinese herbalism, we call mint boho and it is used for cooling and treating early stage colds and fevers, sore throats, anything where there is redness or irritation or itching, boha or mint can really soothe that with its cold, spicy, aromatic essential oils. It benefits the lung and liver, and like other members of the mint family, also benefits the digestive system. Basically, anything with a lot of volatile oils like mint is going to help the lungs, the liver, and digestion. Now, this is broadleaf plantain. I've already covered it lots of other times, but just know it's good for bee stings. Up above us, we have the beautiful, majestic, flowing black willow. All willows love water. They just like to have their feet wet, and they are great, their bark specifically, for pain relief, and it is where our medicine aspirin came from. 
So if you got a headache, you can just reach on over and chew on some willow bark. Just make sure that it's willow and not something weird. Use your Plant ID apps. This is a little dead lotus flower. It came from all the lily pounds out there. Lotuses are a good omen, I believe, but they are just too far away for me to really harvest or anything. This is just an old dead lily pad. If the water weren't so nasty, I'd probably collect more. I love looking at the little fish. This is a very nutrient rich pond or lake. We call it a lake in Washington, but other people would call it a pond and it is frequented by fishermen because these trout are going to get big. Over here, you can see this beautiful pink fuzzy Dr. Seuss looking flower. This is Rose Spirea. Not a lot is known about the medicinal benefits of this rose family plant, but we do know that some native tribes use the seeds for stomach problems. And here we have the first blackberry I have seen all season. What is with the berries this year, guys? As you can see, this is our little native bear blackberries. They're not ripe yet. I'm glad they exist though. It has just been a weird year for gardening, for fruit, for berries. Has anyone else experienced that? This is an unrelated rant, but I've just been so frustrated. Usually I have like pounds of berries I've harvested in my freezer by now, but it is what it is. After a little photobomb for my daughter, you can see this extremely common weed across America. This is yellow dock. It is in its seed stage right now, and you can actually use these seeds as a yummy starvation food. You collect a bunch of them, you separate the wheat from the chaff by shaking them around in some bowls, and grind the seeds up, you've got a flower. Traditionally, yellow dock root is used to cure anemia because it's so high in iron, and it also helps a lot of digestive conditions. It does taste kind of sour and bitter though. Due to fishing mishaps, it is always Christmas time here. See all the hanging ornaments? So classy. This swamp grass that you see everywhere here was a little harder to identify because I couldn't find any flowering spikes like normal swamp grasses have, like iris and cattail. I am fairly certain that it is Acorus calamus or sweet flag, but I need to come back later, look for little flower spikes and double check. Sweet flag will cure toothache pain. It will cure all sorts of digestive diseases and maladies. It is your best friend if you have IBS and its weird aromatic quality is great at waking you up and in high enough amounts can even be psychedelic. Finally, we have the beautiful water lily. The leaves are nice and slimy and will heal your wounds. All parts are edible. I hear the seeds and the roots taste the best, kind of like potatoes. Just be careful not to confuse it with yellow lilies, which are toxic in high doses. Shout out to my super cute family for putting up with me always wandering off and filming things. <laughs> Hey guys, I have a really exciting announcement. I actually just published my first ebook. It is called Elemental Herbalism and you can find it on Kindle and Amazon. You just search my name, Ariel Smith, Elemental Herbalism, or you can click on the handy link in the description. Thank you again for always supporting me and I'll see you next time.